5 seconds honorable president my dear friends ladies and gentlemen i am very grateful to you all who have provided me an opportunity to share my views with all of you on this auspicious occasion if we agree that the purpose of schools is to educate and not to train students to pass a series of examinations then we need to ask ourselves about the nature of education that our schools should provide human societies have functioned and in many cases continue to do so without schools living the life of the community working in the fields listening to elders taking part in ceremonies all these activities contributed to the education of a person within the community people learnt about their work or trade crafts values and social norms directly from their environment the community thus provides a permanent framework for learning there was no recognized school teacher every adult was a teacher children learned from their own experience and of others they learned by doing so that knowledge life and work were inseparable it was only later that schools came into existence for known purposes while some were giving only religious instruction and knowledge of sacred teachings others were giving particular and often secret knowledge of the health care arts still others were only association of workmen we are aware that schools stand somewhat separate from society and are often expected to function freely with little or no relation to the community the curriculum followed in the schools is dictated by educational boards functioning in their own form of ivory towers the teachers or parents have no say in this matter leave alone the poor children for whose so called benefit the whole exercise is undertaken whether universal education means uniform education is a question whether any one pattern of education suits different types of people communities and the areas is another question if classrooms function as closed boxes with no interaction with the outside world such education will have no relevance for the child as well as the community we are already seeing the result of alienation produced by such a type of education there is a very little transfer of understanding taking place between classroom learning and the world of work teachers who might teach the value of health as part of the prescribed syllabus turn a blind eye to children littering the playgrounds or even using these areas as toilets when we talk of education for all in the 21st century we hardly recognize the diversity of cultural patterns socio economic conditions and varied needs and aspirations of different peoples confined as the discourse to the voices of the relatively affluent urban population our schools provide an education that caters to the aspirations of a very small section of the population that too without recognizing individual variation in learning styles that will be invariably present thus we have schools in our cities which seem completely irrelevant to people who earn their livelihood by working with their hands ask a mason or a carpenter why he chooses not to send his child to school and you will get a ready reply stating that a metric passed by will be useless he cannot earn his bread himself he would be unfit for challenging jobs he will be fit only for a government job he also says a carpenter earns more than with his tools and skilled hands than a person who is a graduate and works as a school teacher it is time that communities are given power to create the types of a school that they need 
at present schools are institutions whose rules and regulations are followed by parents it is here that gandhi ji's lesson on the value of freedom of initiative to pursue a cause can be source of great inspiration coming to the role of planning and development the argument of some that the exercise of planning is a waste and should be scrapped cannot be accepted planning is not merely drawing up a list of projects and finding resources to execute them but it is a continuous movement towards goal political freedom is not full without economic freedom it should give an opportunity to a large number of people to profit by the democratic method and to have equal chance to prosper to achieve this goal planning is necessary the basis of a planning is to strengthen the nation and to increase production nothing is more important than production when we have to solve the problems of poverty and disease it is obvious that agricultural and industrial production must increase and for this our people must have technical training as our industries grow the agricultural sector grows and our country becomes stronger earlier we were totally dependent on other countries for even small things today due to perspective planning we have progressed from a major importer to a major exporter the basic thing is that we should have faith in ourselves in our people and in our capacity to work unitedly forgetting our differences thank you all letter dated the 26th march 2008 from sri manjunada enterprises bannur road siddhartha layout mysore address to sri raghavendra agencies kampli road hospet bellari district dear sirs we are in receipt of your letter of 21st ultimo and thank you very much for the same we are very happy to note that you have gone through the catalog and literature forwarded to you and that our new product has impressed you and your customers we are sending here with samples of the same and trust that it will reach you safely we also take the liberty of sending you samples of our new product which will be in the market next month the trial production has been successfully completed and the commercial production will commence shortly we would appreciate if you would distribute the samples to your customers and obtain their opinion so that any improvement or modification desired may be incorporated before the product is launched we are happy to inform you that our directors have favorably considered your request for a sole selling agency in your city we very much appreciate your efforts in promoting our products and hope that the proposed arrangement will be to our mutual benefit we are enclosing here with a draft agreement according to this agreement you should place orders for at least rupees 2 lakhs you should not represent our competitors you should furnish a bank guarantee for rupees 2 lakhs and you will get a credit of 60 days for all purchases made for all the orders received direct from your jurisdiction we will pay your commission of 10% the agency agreement can be terminated by either party by tendering two months notice or by mutual consent if you approve of the above conditions please let us know at the earliest so that the agreement can be finalized and sent to you for signature we await your positive response at the earliest it may also be noted that you will be given an extra commission of 10% on sales above rupees 10 lakhs thanking you and assuring you of our best services at all times yours